Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. After Paul writes uh, through, through verse 9, he begins verse 10, and he says, Finally, my brother. Now, in, in conclusion to this letter, he's, he's beginning to finish up what he wrote here. He's, he's ending his letter to the, to the uh, church at Ephesus or to the region at Ephesus. Um, and he says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let's stop here just a second and think about this. Why would Paul stop and go, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, if we're not going to ever have any trouble? Dad Hagen uh, used to say, he said, some people get the idea from our preaching that you're going to go through life on flowery beds of ease, not ever encountering any trouble. But that's just not the truth. That would, we would not have scriptures like be strong in the Lord and the power of his might if you weren't going to have to deal with some stuff. We're, we're encouraged to fight the good fight of faith. Can you say amen? So therefore, we have to be able to deal with the things of life that come against us, that the enemy brings against us, that the temptations we have to deal with, that the, even just the circumstances of life bring. You know, some things are not just the devil is sitting there arrayed in demonic activity causing it to happen. It's just, it happens. Hello. Just because you slipped in the shower does not mean the devil was there making your shower slippery. No, your soap did. I took a spin about, about three months ago. And I mean, I stepped into the shower. When I did, my foot shot across to the other side. I came down my, my knee and, you know, of course, a walking shower has, a little, you know, has like a four-inch rise for the door and everything. My back foot got caught on that. I came down full weight on that back leg, bent backwards. You know, I thought I had tore my knee all. I didn't, but, I, but at the moment I was thinking, but your thought went, I just tore my knee all to pieces, you know, and it did not feel good. Now, there wasn't no demon there putting the slick floor down. You know, if you don't rinse it real good each time, you're going to get a buildup. I didn't rinse it real good. Now, I have a mat down there. <laughs> no more skating for me. Are you here? You know, so, I mean, you know, there are things in this world that happen because they happen. Now, is Satan the author of evil? Yes. You know, bad things happen because Satan has orchestrated bad things into the atmosphere. Does it, you know, just because you get sick doesn't mean there's a devil there putting sickness on you. But sickness is a result of, of sin and the fall, the fall of man and Satan bringing about um, a perversion of health. But it doesn't mean that there's actual demon activity making it happen. Okay? You know, there are just viruses out there, you know, that, that we, we can stand against by faith and overcome and win against. Amen. They're out there. And we just have to deal with it. We deal with it with the Word of God. We deal with it in faith. But you know, you don't have to cast the devil out of everybody that got the flu. Now, if there's demons, now sometimes there are demons behind diseases. And you've got to cast them out. But that doesn't mean that everything that happens is that way. I'm just trying to make sure we get, we get a proper balance. Be strong in the Lord, the power of His might. You're going to encounter stuff in this world. Hello? And you have to be ready to deal with it by faith and through the Word of God. So Paul writes here and says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then he tells us to do this, put on the whole armor of God. What? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, there are going to be battles in life that you're dealing with all these different things. Or at different times dealing with one of these arenas of life. You're going to deal with demon spirits. You're going to deal with stuff. And I'll tell you, you better be prepared with the word of God and all the, the armor of God to be able to deal with the devil. Amen? Now, when I was making clarification there previously about that not everything happens is a devil, that there are things that happen that is a devil. Amen? You know, so, you, you know, you, we, and that is part of growing in wisdom and discernment. Not, not the gift of the discerning of spirits. That's a different thing. But discerning things. You have to be able to discern. I'm telling you, sometimes, you know, you don't have to have the gift of discerning the spirits in operation, but you can know there's a demon spirit in operation. I've had that happen. I do. Well, it wasn't a gift of the spirit. I just, I had, I had a discerning because I've walked with God. Because I've come to know the things of God. And you can discern things 
by your counsel and by your walk with the Lord, by counsel with the Lord, by wisdom with the Lord, you come to learn how to discern certain things and know if there is actually, you know, there's demon activity there. Now, if, you, if you're discerning a spiritual operation, you would know more. Sometimes you even see into the realm of the spirit and see what's going on. Remember Dad Hagen was talking about he was praying in a church one time and, uh, and they, they hadn't had some, something going on in that church for some time and you know he was laying on the platform he looked up and all of a sudden he saw into the spirit and saw this monkey like figure up there in the rafters and he, 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 he began to talk he said you got to come down from there. Well I don't want to. Well you got to. And he said in the name of Jesus come down from there. He said well, plop, plop on the floor. He said as a matter of fact you go on out of here. In the name of Jesus, I don't want to. He said, I said, in the name of Jesus, leave. And he, he, he kept turning around looking like, you, like my dog does when I tell her to get in her kiddo. The, 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 my wife starts doing this now. She, oh, bless your heart. She'll do that dog. And the dog will stop and shake. Like, are you going to let me not go in? Are you going to let me not go in? I get it, that kiddo. Oh, bless your heart. She'll take two steps and look at Janie. Oh, bless your heart. She'll shake. Just like begging not to have to go in there. Well, we can't leave her out because beagles are notorious for destroying things when let loose and left unattended. We came in the other night, and she was standing at the door greeting us because we had left her out. I thought, well, we'll leave her out tonight. And she was just standing, wagging her tail, looking at us real, like, whatever. We thought, are you meeting us, Maddie? Oh, it's so good to see you. And petted her, and she walked off, and I walked by the trash can and looked at the trash can. You better get your back in over there because she'd been in the trash can. That's why she was so close to the door. Well, that demon spirit kept looking back at Brother Hagin, like, don't make me go. He said, I said, get on, I command you to leave here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and not come back. He said, and finally that demon ran out the front door, he opened the front door, and he said, the spirits, he's seeing in the street, he's discerning the spirits. That demon went down the street, went to some nightclub down the street that he could see, and went in there, and the building burned down the next day. See, demon, demon spirits, see, if you're into the discerning of spirits, you can see into the spirit right now. Uh, but on the other side of that, you can have discernment. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your battle is not against Joe or Louise. Hello? Or as one of Janie's students was last, a couple of years ago, L-A, the, a, a, a hyphen A. Her name was Ladasha. Because Janie said, well, how do you pronounce your name? la uh She said, that's Ladasha. And that's how she spelled her name, Ladasha. <laughs> I'm not joking. That was, that was one of the, that was, <laughs> I actually saw it because sometimes I'd help her transfer stuff into the columns so she could put it into the computer. Yep, Ladasha. All right, so it doesn't mean if it's Joe, Louise, or Ladasha. That's not who your battle is. The spirit and operation behind them. Amen? Somebody's harassing you constantly, giving you a hard time. There's a demon spirit in operation that, that you're dealing with. Now, let me say this. They may want that devil. I don't think we're going to get very far tonight. Just don't, just kind of got a, an inkling. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm discerning that we're not going to get very far tonight. <clears throat> Another story Dad Hagen used to tell. Now see, uh, you can keep the demon spirit from operating against you, but you can't necessarily get it out of the person. Now Dad used to tell a story about a, a, a minister and his wife, and she was, a, he, he'd say she was a beautiful woman. She used to sing at all the conventions, had a beautiful voice. But somewhere in there, she got, she got a demon spirit began to come talk to her. She says, you know, you could have been famous. You could have been rich. You could have had all those worldly goods if you had gone, to the, gone and used your talents for the world instead of for the church. And, um, and she said, I bind that in Jesus' name. I cast that thought down. I won't receive that. But that demon kept coming back. And over time, now see what happened was, uh, he was at a meeting there, I, and I'll get back to where she was. You know, remember, you know, in time, she came back. Uh, but Dad was holding a meeting for this man, and this woman would call him up and cuss him out and just harass him every day because they had, they had divorced. They had, they, had, they had split up. And, um, and so she was just con that spirit was constantly harassing this man. He's trying, to, he's trying to move on with life and continue his ministry, and she's just harassing him constantly. Well, when I got to talk about Dad, we went into a vision and saw everything that happened. He saw, he saw the spirit come to her and tell her she, she could be, had fame and, and fortune in the world, and, uh, but she had settled for the church. And uh, he, saw, she, he saw her rebuke that in Jesus' name. And several times it came back, she rebuked it, but one time it came back and she began to dwell on it. And it was like a, a, a black dot went into her head. Now, the Lord told him, he said, now she could have still got rid of that if she, if she wanted to. But see, she began to dwell on it and like it. So that's the problem. 
See, we, we think we're going to set everybody free in Jesus' name automatically, but if they like it, you can't set them free. Are you here? And so over a period of time, she meditated on that thing long enough, and uh, she had left her husband, was living with other men, just shacking up with other men. He went to her, tried to get her to come back. I mean, you know, tr you know that, takes, that takes a man who, 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 who loves his wife, wants to walk with God, tried to get her to come back, and she, she cursed and said, you know, um, she cursed Jesus. Said, I don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. Dad said that that dark dot went from her head down into her spirit. And the Lord said up until that point, she could have been saved, but she's lost forever. But what, what about it, you know? Now that spirit's harassing. Now we, we got authority over demons, but we don't have the authority over the demon in their life if they want it. But we have authority over the operation of that demon against us. So they said, well, Lord, what do we do? He says, you, you command that spirit to cease and desist in this operation against my servant. Call his name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what they did. They said, now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the spirit operating in so-and-so will, will hinder and, 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 and work against so-and-so uh, in the name of Jesus anymore. And then from that day forward, she never operated against him, but she, she went to hell. So he couldn't get the demon out of her, but he could keep it from affecting him. Y'all hear you going home. Said, so y'all hear you going home. See? So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, mights, rulers of the darkness of this world. So there can be demon spirits operating in other people. Do you understand? That we can deal with and keep them from operating, their operations against us, but we can't get it out of them. And we don't like to hear that. You know, we, we charismatics think we got, we, we just, we got the hocus pocus one. And we can make, you know, everybody get healed, everybody be demon free. Everybody gets saved. If that were true, everybody got saved on the day, the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came the church, would already be, we'd already be in heaven. We wouldn't even been born. The whole world would have gone and gotten saved. Hello. I said, hello. Y'all hear you gone home. No. We wrestle. We have combat against. What? Not with flesh and blood. Now, you see, if a, <clears throat> if a person's operating in something and they're working against us, you can't go knock them out and deal with it. That's not going to fix it. They may make, you, may make you feel better for the moment. And there have been the times you, you think, man, that would just make me feel real good. Hello. I mean, as a matter of fact, if I, if I did, I think I would enjoy that for a moment. Just, just, a, just a moment of pleasure for pow! Right in the kisser. Remember the... Uh, Honeymooners. Jackie Gleason. Pow! Right in the kisser. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. You, know, you think that'll make you feel better, but see, you haven't dealt with anything. That spirit's still in operation. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So even if somebody is demon-possessed, given over to the devil, will not be set free, your battle's still not against them. Now, in some cases, they can be set free. But they got to want it. I said, they got to want it. You can't be free. I remember uh, Brother Norval teaching. I was listening to him minister. He said he was, had ministered in a service. And, um, and, and, and homosexual spirits would come to his meetings. You think, how dumb is the devil? You go to the meeting where the guy cast devils out. Now, their heart wouldn't be free. See? And they were drawn to a place that could give them liberty and freedom. And, um, you know, he had ministered, and he was sitting at dinner somewhere, and, 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 and this, this girl came to the back of the door and, and, and then ran down there and said, Brother Noble, Brother Noble, but I, I, I've been living like a lesbian, and I, and I want to be free. I want to be free. And he cast the devil out of her. And she, oh, she's just worshiping Jesus. He, now Noble says, worship the Lord, worshiping, worshiping, worshiping Jesus. You know? He says, now, he pointed back, he said, if your partner come down here, I'll cast the devil out of her, and she'll be free too. And that girl got up and screamed and ran. She didn't want her devil cast out. Hello? Now don't tell me that the homosexual lesbian spirit's not a demon. I, you, you can watch men who were, who were not homosexual give in to that spirit, and all of a sudden they act like a woman. They talk like a woman. Hello? They carry themselves like, and women, carry themselves like men. It's a spirit. I said it's a spirit. It's not just, it's just not normal. I don't care what any, any, any 
study says they're done by people who are on grants who are making money off that study, who have, a, who have an ulterior motive in it. They were born that way. No, they gave in to that thing. Now you got parents letting their five-year-olds choose their sexual identity. The parents have got devils. Just because they play, just because they play with, listen, my boy played with G.I. Joe's. If there was a Barbie involved, he was on a date with Barbie. All right? He wasn't playing with Barbie. Hello? I don't think you should take dolls away from But listen, you have to train your children. Men are men. And you don't need to be looking at Barbie's uh, bodacious figure at four. Getting a warped perspective of what a woman looks like. You know, waistline like this. We won't go anywhere else. But you get the picture, right? Okay, we just went to the waistline. There, there's demon spirits involved. But when people give in to that spirit and want it, you can't cast it. But if they want to be free, they can get free. I said, if they want to be free, they can be free. Like John Osteen used to preach in his sermon, how big is your want to? Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> and so anyway... You know, Brother Norwood did that. The, woman, the other girl ran out and left. The one got set free. The other one ran away. One wanted to be free. The other one didn't. Well, what happens? One's free. One's bound. Or he didn't have the power. Nope. The power won't work if they don't want it. You have to choose you this day, life or death, blessing or cursing. So in my house, we'll choose life. Amen? All right. So we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. The, the, uh, the people that you, know, you may be operating against you aren't the flesh and blood. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that I can, get, I can cast a devil out of them? No, but you can take authority over the demon operating in them. I'm telling you, it can't function against you. It can't operate against you. And it doesn't have the authority to operate against you. Now, it can, you, know, you may not be able to stop it from operating against anybody else, but you can stop it from operating against you. Are you here, you're going home. I said, are you here, you're going home. I mean, I've, I've seen people turn into other people. You know, the Bible teaches us that when we get, come into Christ, we, we, we turn into different men and women. But I've seen Christians turn into other people because they gave heed to principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. They let them enter into their thinking. I've had people tell me, they're driving out of the parking lot of this church, and all of a sudden an anger against me and towards me came on, came on them for no reason. Now, I know one, one, minute, one person in church, they told me, they said, I began to rebuke that. No, in the name of Jesus, I won't receive that. I know other people who tell me, who told me years later, said, I'm, just, I'm just angry with you. Why? I don't know. Why are you angry? I don't know. Well, don't, can't, don't you think that just maybe you're letting a devil talk to you? If you're angry with me, you don't know why? That's unreasonable. Now, if I slapped your wife or I kicked your kids or something like that, I could understand you being angry. But just having no reason behind your anger doesn't sound very uh, normal to me. All right? Spirits get involved in things. And so we wrestle not against, it was so really they're not wrestling against me. They should have been wrestling against that devil that was trying to cause them to do what they, what they ultimately did was leave the church. So, but against principalities, powers, rulers of, the dark, uh, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we wrestle with them. Put on the whole armor of God that we can deal with these things. So you're not equipped in your ability and your emotions and your, and your psyche to deal with these things. You need spiritual, supernatural equipment. You need equipment that comes out of heaven and glory to be to God. You need things that God equips you with to be able to stand in that battle and do battle against these things and come out victorious. Somebody shout glory. But if you think you're a match for the devil in your ability and your, your, your wisdom and your ability to figure this out, or what, you're, you're in trouble. You're going to be toast. Devil's going to have you extra crispy. Before it's all over. No. You need to be equipped for the battle. And realize it's a spiritual battle. Remember Paul wrote to the church at Corinth and said this. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. So we need... Well, 
The church has gotten cute. We don't use supernatural weapons anymore. We use all natural. Now, I'm not against counseling, but I'm telling you, we need more moves of the Holy Ghost than we do need more counseling office visits. We need more times in the spirit than we do on the couch. And I'm talking about the psycho psychological couch. I, 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 don't, I do not uh, discount the value of some things that take place with counseling. But I'm telling you, what you, you need more than that is you need, the, you need the supernatural empowerment of the Holy Ghost. You need the Spirit of God dealing with things you're dealing, that, that, that helps you deal with things in a supernatural way because you're dealing with a supernatural devil. And he's going to play a supernatural game with your head. Amen? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but, you know, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Satan, with those principalities, powers, mights, dominions, rulers of the darkness of this world, will set up strongholds in your life. Now, they're not called weak holds. There's a reason they're not called weak holds. Because they can get a strong hold on you. Bring you into delusion. Bring you into deception. Control your life. And some people like it. Another story of a woman that um, she was hearing voices. Those voices were telling her what to do and, and things and kind of thing. And, uh, and they were asking somebody, they were asking this ministry about it, about the, the voices she was hearing. And said, well, we, we can cast that out. She said, but, but I like it. She enjoyed the voices. If you enjoy demon voices, you're in trouble. I said, you're in trouble. They'll begin, to, they'll begin listen. There's a new game out on, on, the, on Facebook. Is it Facebook or Twitter? Social media altogether. Called Charlie Charlie. Now, if you catch your kids messing around that, slap them and take the, 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 the media away from them. And then cast the devil out. It is, it's basically, and this is, let me give it to you in, in real simple terms. It is a social media Ouija board. They're summoning demon spirits. It's, it's, called, you know, it's kind of one of those, like the bucket game. Everybody wants to do the bucket game and all this kind of stuff and play and all this stuff. They are teaching them and encouraging them to get together with this app and summon demon spirits. And we take and we put the tool in our kids' hands and 90% of the parents don't monitor it. Hello? I said, hello, you better be watching it. Kids at school will be going, hey, let's do this. Let's get together and do this. And you spent $35 a month for that particular one plus the extra amount for the gigabytes and whatever for your child to have the tool without your observation and your knowledge to summon demon spirits. You're going to have to be wiser than your children. I said, you're going to have to be wiser than your children. Can I get an amen, oh me, or help me, Jesus? You're, I mean, when they're young, you just flat out tell them. Phone comes to me at night. I'm going to see what you've been doing. As a matter of fact, what do they need anything else on that phone except the ability to contact you in an emergency? Shut it all down. And if they need it for, need it for school or whatever, or whatever, you sit there with them, when they're, especially when they're younger. You don't give them, don't give them the act, well, you're just being a hover parent. You know, they call hover parents, helicopter parents. You know, they hover over their kids. You doggone right. Because the devil's hovering over them, looking for, you know, the, the Bible says the, 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 the devil goes forth looking, seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for an end. He's looking to call out kids and destroy their life. And we go, well, I can't be a hover parent. You better be. The school systems and the devil are working in conjunction together to brainwash them into pinko commie demon worshipers. Actually, they may not even be pinko. They might be full-blown red commie. Hello. 
So you talk like an old guy. I don't care what I talk like. I'm telling you, it's the truth. Our country's, the, 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 the school systems and the politicians are trying to turn us into a communist nation and doing a pretty good job of it. New York City has a socialist mayor. Full-blown socialist. That's one step away from commie. Hello? Y'all with me? Ex-Navy? Swabby? You with me? All right. The devil's after your children. The devil's after you. The devil's after everybody. The devil's after the church. Do you think for a second that all this homosexual agenda is about tolerance? It's about shutting the church down so that the church can't preach the word without being called hate speech and arresting the pastors. Its ultimate goal by the spirit behind it is to shut the church down. But you know what? That's all right. Because when persecution comes, it spreads the church out and we get stronger. So keep messing with the church devil in America. You're going to awaken. You're going to wake up like the Japanese did after Pearl Harbor. I'm afraid all we did was awaken a sleeping giant. You're going to awaken the sleeping giant called the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's coming after your kingdom with everything it's got. And I'm telling you, it's got more than anything the devil's got. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now back up. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, mice, the rules of the darkness of the world, and spiritual weakness in high places. Or heavenly places. High, high. So what do we do? We put on the whole armor of God. Again, this is supernatural armor. This isn't, this isn't put on, you know, uh, self-help tapes. This isn't put on, you know, your, your, your uh, vitamin of the day tape. I'm not against vitamins, but I'm just saying we put more faith in our vitamins than we do in the Word of God. Jesus is our healer. I don't have anything against vitamins. I don't have anything against fish oil. I don't have anything against things that give you supplements. You know, if you're not getting the right kind of diet and stuff, that's, that's okay. It's fine. But don't put your faith there. Put it, Jesus is the healer. I said, Jesus is the healer. Don't put your faith in that. I said, don't put your faith in that. Put your faith in the word. All right? So it says here, um, in Philippians chapter 2, which is where I'm not supposed to be, Wherefore, take unto you to the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. Or one, one older translation before it was cleaned up a little bit, said, uh, having fought the battle to the end, remain on the battlefield ready to do battle again. Amen? Stand therefore. What? Stand against the enemy. Stand against the wiles of the evil one. Stand against the wicked one. Hallelujah. With the supernatural equipping. Having your loins girt about with truth. Now, we've got too many people not wanting to preach the truth. <coughs> they want to preach a part of the truth. They want to preach, just tell everybody that God loves them. That's all we need. Is the, all we need is the hippie song from the 70s. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. How many remember that? Jesse, you remember because I've sung it so many times. You don't remember that. You weren't even born. Bill. Dick and Nelly, Belinda, Carrie, yeah. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little love. I don't even remember the whole song because they was peace, man. They, they with their midi, with their maxi dresses on and their flowers in their hair. You know, everybody's going to San Francisco, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And they they all singing peace and love, sweet love. And they get to the church. And all of a sudden, we get to church here in this day, and all we need is to teach them the love of God. And you know what? God forced so the love of the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoso would believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But I'm going to tell you something else. He inspired the Apostle Paul to write a lot of doctrine in the church. And part of that is what you do and don't do. We have to teach the whole counsel of God, not just the part that makes everybody have the ushy gushy feeling. Oh, I feel so good. I remember there was a movie out back in the 70s. This woman had a car wreck, and she saw a light, and she came back to life. And they wouldn't, she wouldn't say God is, you know, it was God that did it. She just said it was love that did it. She, she encountered love. She would never say it was God. Well, God is love. Amen. 
It's the essence of his being is love. But his love demands certain things. Why? Because sin can't stand in his presence. So his love demands that we teach and preach what things are get you zapped. It's still the love of God. But we need the whole counsel of all the truth. So have your loins girt about with truth. You can't go in half caught against the devil. He'll clean your plow. Hello? Partial truth will get you killed. Now, about 20 years ago, uh, a barge going down the Arkansas River ran into Interstate 40, about 15 miles inside the state line, and knocked the pillars out, and the bridge fell in the water. And cars were just going, Gee, it was the middle of the night. They couldn't see the road was out. Hello? Now, there's some guys down there fishing. They got and gone out fishing early. They saw it happen. They're screaming. But you know, how can, a car can't hear you down there in the water. You're screaming, and they're doing 70 miles an hour. And, you know, and, they're, and, you know, there's, and they're just boogieing along. So finally, they got a flare out, and after, and, and after several times, finally got a flare that shot up and got on the road and attracted a trailer could see from the flare of the bridge that he, he jackknifed in the middle of the road and stopped it all. Now, truth is what? Truth is, you could leave, at that time, you could leave Greensboro, North Carolina and drive all the way out to the Muskogee Turnpike and go to Tulsa, or actually, you could take uh, Interstate 40 and go to, go to uh, Oklahoma City and actually all the way out to Barstow, California. That's only a partial truth. The rest of the truth is, the bridge is that if you keep going and don't take a detour, you're going to get killed. And too often times we settle for partial truth in the body of Christ without telling the whole truth. And that's not, that's not full equipping. You have to have the full equipping. See, it's the grace of God is, is central to the New Testament doctrine and teaching. Amen. But grace, aside from the responsibilities the word teaches you to walk in, will not get you where you need to get. And the devil will take advantage of you. Well, I can go drink all I want, smoke all I want, fornicate all I want because I'm under grace, and that'll get you in trouble. See, truth. We have to be, how our loins go about with truth. What? All the truth. We take the whole truth. Remember, when you go to court, you probably tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you got. Yeah, the, the whole thing. You can't, you can't leave part of it out. Why? Because partial truth skews reality. And when you get into the Word of God and you begin to do things in the Word of God and you begin to, you know, put on the armor of God, you need your loins girded about with truth, all the truth. And the truth part sometimes means, you know, I'm not prosperous. I'm not getting any money. Well, but I don't believe in tithing. See, you're not walking in truth. You don't have truth around your loins. I said you don't have truth around your loins. Paul wrote to the church at Corinth very clearly and said, He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Every man as he, accord he purposes according to his own heart. You don't, you don't sow bountifully, you're not going to reap bountifully. Can I get a bobblehead? So partial truth. Now we need, all, we need our loins girt about with all the truth. Like that, you know, if you go back and listen to dad. See, people say dad Hagen says stuff he never said. Well, I have what I say. They read, the, they read the book cover. Did you go in and read the book? Now, I just read the title. That was good. Having faith in your faith. The, the titles were catchy, but did you read the material? They go out and say, he said things he didn't say. And if you read the book and listened to the tape series, listened to him teach you to find out he didn't say that. Now, don't go to sleep on me. Wake up. I'm not going to say wake up little Susie because there's no Susie's in here. But you need the whole truth. Amen? You can have what you say as long as what you say is in, is in line with what the Word of God promises you. That's what you, you can't have the things the Bible doesn't promise you or the Bible forbids. You can't have your neighbor's wife by faith. You cannot. You might get it, but it won't be by faith. Hello, it might be by lust. It might be by adultery and fornication, but it won't be by faith. Don't you go testifying on television about your love relationship. No, you had a, you had a whore relationship. That went ever real big. Hello? Get on television. Tell everybody how, how wonderful this was. No, you, you committed adultery. Hello? You committed adultery. Now, just flat, flat off that's up. I, I was in sin. Now, 
God's forgiven us. My former spouse has forgiven me. And we're moving forward. But there's nothing beautiful about how we got started. It was adulterous. It was ungodly. It was against the will of God. Instead of making it look like some love. David and Bathsheba is not a love story. Are you here? It's a mercy of God story. It ain't got nothing to do with love. It was pure, absolute lust. How do you know? He stayed behind, went up on the roof. She's butt naked on the other roof. Said, get over here. Hello. Had sex with her. Then found out she's pregnant. Called her husband home. Tried to, had a conspiracy to commit a cover-up. Didn't work for that. Then had him murdered. It's a pure mercy story. It has nothing to do with love. Hollywood made it a love story. It's not a love story. It's a sin story. And a story about the redemptive and merciful God whom we serve. Who can take the worst of circumstances and bring forgiveness and redemption in the middle of it. It was not God's approval on that marriage. Hello? That's why the first child couldn't live. Because they could not have it told later in history as an allegory that God approved of the relationship. So we have to have all truth. So we have to have our loins girt about with truth. Why is truth so important? It is the foundation. What did Jesus say? Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. My words, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God is core to our weaponry. As a matter of fact, the belt, hello, your loins girt about with truth. Um, let me get this right before I, I just jump in here and say something I shouldn't say. Yep. The, the belt of the Roman soldier was the implement that held everything else in place. Your righteousness, your feet shod, the preparation of the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. Everything else in your armory was held in place by the belt. Truth holds everything in place. And if we're going to put on the breastplate of righteousness, we need to know what true righteousness is. Instead of some pseudo-righteousness we make up in the body of Christ. Can you say Glorioski? Just be a Polak tonight. If you spell it Y, it's Russian. Okay, it's Ruski. If you spell it with I, it's Russian. It's Polak, Polish. Amen? So we're going, to, we're going to put on what? The belt or our loins girt about with truth. Because that holds it. Truth will keep everything in place. It will keep you from getting out of line with the teaching on righteousness. You know, we, we get to teach them righteous. Oh, I can't do anything that will make God ever hate me. You know, God will always, you know why you know, he's going to be crying in heaven? Because God's going to cry about the people who went to hell and rejected Jesus. Amen. That, that's what the tears are going to be about. It's not going to be about anything. It's going to be about the fact that people rejected what he provided. But they still went to hell. And they still go to hell. So we get, we get the, the, you know, the, the breastplate of righteousness. I'm righteous. Yeah, but you better hold it in place in truth. Not get a righteousness that the Bible doesn't promise. What is righteousness that the Bible doesn't promise? That you can just live any way you want to live and still you're righteous. You're right. you, know, you, you can't just live any way you want to live. You'll open the door up for the devil to get in. You can end up going to hell even after you got saved. And we're going to stop right there. That's enough for one night, isn't it? Hallelujah. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.